Coming up next on Base Hunters, we're taking an in-depth look at the LFE in Beekeeper. Stick around. Hey, hey, home theater fans and fellow bass heads. My name is Todd Anderson, editor at the Home Theater Forum, avnirvana.com, and you're watching episode number 21 of Bass Hunters. And today we have Jason Statham and Beekeeper. This film is landing on disc next week. That is April 23rd. We sourced our copy from our great friends over at Kaleidoscape. They are our founding partner in this venture. So many thanks to them. And you can see right there, I downloaded this movie originally on March 1st. I think it actually landed on the Kscape server system way back on January 30th of this year. It's about a 54 gig file and has a lossless Dolby Atmos audio track. Also want to give a quick shout out to our other two partners in crime. We have Ascendo that is the speaker manufacturer Ascendo from Germany, makers of some really gnarly killer subwoofers and infrasonic subs. And of course, their speakers are also absolutely amazing too. I had a chance to hear them as part of a Trinov demo system at CDA 2023 last year, and it was just mind blowing. Really, really enjoyed that. And our other partner, Sutherland AV Marketing, they are here in the United States and they are the North American distribution arm for Ascendo. So if you have interest in Ascendo and you're here in North America, whether you want to be a dealer or if you have any questions about the brand and getting it here in the United States, definitely go hit up Todd Sutherland over at Sutherland AV. All right, folks, let's call up that scorecard. And you can see right there, I'm giving this one a C plus. It's a decent action film. It's really, in my mind, held back by some of the supporting cast, and their performances are a little one-dimensional, perhaps, uh, but plenty of good action sequences. If you're an action junkie, I think you're going to like this one a lot. In terms of the AV scores, we're going with double A's. I absolutely loved the look of this film. It's very clean, has a cool color palette great shadow detail and the 4k image is talk about detail it is loaded to the brim no evidence of banding lots of nice little moments of lens flare all of the characteristics that my eye likes to see so i'm going with an a for this one in terms of audio this is a dynamic and explosive atmos track so many elements in terms of sound come into mind when i think about this film including sound pans that are just off the charts particularly during fight sequences where action is just smashing against one wall or the other. And then you have these overhead elements, these atmospherics that just envelop the room. It's like this bubble of sound is just washing all over you. Hats off to the uh, audio design team for this film. Now, in terms of bass, this one was really close. Do I go with an A- minus or an A? And you can see right there, I went with an A. And I think there's a lot to love about this film. There's a few LFE moments that I found a little bit annoying, but the good far outweighs the bad in this case. And uh, I think this one needs to go with an A. And here's a look at the 12 scenes that I used to analyze this film. Uh, the ones in pink, as always, those are the two key scenes that we're going to take a little bit closer of a look at. Of course, if you're a Clydescape owner, no need to go hunting around for these scenes on your own. You can just hit me up over on avnirvana.com. Ask me for the script file. I'll send it over to you. These scenes will load up for you right there. All you have to do is have this movie in your possession on your server, and you'll be able to watch them just as I watch them here at home. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about a few of the base characteristics that really stuck out in this film before we dive into those two scenes. And the first is what you're looking at right here. These are elongated pulses of base. They're lasting a little bit over a second and a half. Uh, they're centered right around 37 hertz. And these pulses of base appear throughout the entire movie. Let's just give this a quick listen and uh, then we'll look at the FFT analyzer. <laughs> And here's our friend, the FFT analyzer over on this axis. Just as a reminder, these are decibels. The higher goes up this chart, uh, the louder 
it is. And across the bottom here, we have frequency. So this is 20 hertz. Uh, here we have 50 hertz. Um, and this right here, this peak that you're looking at, this is that bass pulse. It's hitting right around 37 hertz, somewhere in that range. And this is fairly loud. I mean, we are getting up to about 93 dB. So relatively impactful, definitely dominates the sound stage. And here's a still of a spectrogram from a little bit later in the movie. I want to say this is about 25 minutes in and you can see these pulses of bass have reemerged. They're a little shorter this time and a little more powerful. Here's a look at one of those pulses in that scene. And you can see right there, the frequency has shifted up just a notch or two but so has decibels. Uh, this one is hitting probably closer to 38, 39 hertz, somewhere in that range. And we're getting up to about 98 dB. And this is fairly deep in the movie. It's well over an hour in, and you can see uh, these pulses of bass are back. Uh, again, varied, they're a little bit longer and significantly more intense. And this screen grab comes from the closing moments of the movie. You can see that the pulse of bass has shifted down uh, quite a bit. We're getting closer to that 33, 34 hertz range. Uh, later in the movie, we also start getting a pulse that's singled out up here in the higher 40s. But look at the intensity right here. We're hitting right around 108 decibels. And uh, this, this is definitely some pretty gnarly stuff. And that leads us into our next base characteristic that uh, is kind of the negative. I talked about maybe giving this movie an A minus and here's exactly the reason why. There are moments in this movie where bass and the score and uh, you know, right here, these are friendly little pulses of bass we were just looking at. Well, they begin to intermingle and overlap with uh, sound that's associated with special effects on the screen, which is what you're seeing unravel right there. So here we have our pulses of bass. You can see them consistently going across. And then starting right here, we add in LFE that's associated with gunfire. And what happens is everything in this scene just becomes this kind of smeared mess. It's actually not that pleasant uh, to listen to. Let's see if we can uh, give this thing a play. <laughs> And I found the same situation happening several different times in the film. And in each instance, it's just not that pleasant on the ears. Now for a third bass characteristic that really sticks out in this film, we're talking bass drops. If you're a fan of bass drops, Beekeeper has got you covered in a big way. I recorded at least five moments where there were discernible bass drops. You can see it right here. This one actually is a double bass drop where you have one that's uh, slightly lower in frequency, but not in intensity. And then this really deep one uh, that sticks out. Let's give this a play. <laughs> And this one's quite interesting to look at on the FFT analyzer. We'll see that double bass drop. Uh, you can see this one's a little shielded here, but you got that first hump happening there, that hump happening there. And as it plays out, you can see it roll right there. That's what a bass drop looks like. Uh, so the first one's in that 50 hertz range. It rolls right down pretty solid. I mean, we are hitting really close to 100 dB right there rolls right down to 30 and tapers off in the high 20s. And you can see this first one, uh, it's starting right about here. So that's right around 30 hertz. Uh, we're hitting right around 90 dB. So not as impactful as this guy, but boy, he likes to roll low. So right down to reference right there around 75 dB, we're hitting pretty close to 20 hertz before it starts to fall off. And just to give you another look at one, uh, this is a still of a spectrogram from later in the film, but there's our bass drop right there. And right here in the FFT analyzer, you're going to see it start to happen right around here as we roll the film right there and it rolls right on down. So that one right there, uh, high thirties, it's shorter and it goes down the twenties before it starts to die off. Of course, every good action movie needs an explosion or two. And we get two really good building explosions in this film. 
They're really brief and that's why we're not featuring them, but let's just take a look uh, just as an FYI for when you're watching this film, you know exactly what you're hearing when this happens. And here's our first big building explosion. And let's just take a look and see what we can see here. You can see we have our big peak right here. This is around 41 Hertz, so fairly deep. Uh, it's hitting about 100, 203 uh, decibels. And then we have our secondary peak right here. This is in, oh gosh, let's guesstimate around 28 Hertz. Uh, it rolls down just a little bit there. That also is hitting at 100 dB. So both of those uh, peak frequencies are pretty impactful. Uh, we also have some stuff going down here, low 20s. Uh, you're getting up to around 85 dB. So all in all, a really nice moment, uh, but it plays out really quick. Uh, let's take a watch. And here's our second big building explosion this time. It's a gas station. And you'll see right here the characteristics of the sound associated uh, with this explosion. Very similar to the building we just looked at. Uh, once again, right here, we are in the low 40s. And uh, we also have a peak developing right here that's in the mid to high 20 hertz range. Uh, we're getting a peak pretty close to 102 dB right there. Not quite as impactful down here in the 20s, but we're just talking about a matter of decibels. Not very much, it just shaves off just a little bit. So not quite as impactful as the first, but you can see right there, it is very similar. Okay, so all of that, we've kind of laid the groundwork. You have a good working knowledge of the kind of bass that you're going to experience in this film. Now let's take a look at the demo scene of the flick. This one is insane when it comes to bass and is absolutely going to light your system up. Let's take a look. And just as a reminder, this is scene BH8. It runs about four minutes long and starts one hour, three minutes and 40 seconds into the film. A lot of what you see right here, we've got our bass pulses going on. We have a nice little bass drop. Uh, right there as we advance here uh, you can see another little mini bass drop with boy some very delicate bass drops kind of painted throughout this scene and as we advance through this much of what you're seeing uh, right here represented down and below 50 hertz uh, and this all of this is probably hitting in close to 90 db this red that you see here uh, it's all associated with the score fast forward here to a fight scene. Jason Statham is duking it out uh, with his adversary, this guy that's hunting him down. And most of what you see during this action sequence, all peppered throughout here. So this is 50 hertz right here, between 50 and 20 hertz. A lot of this is just associated with the punches, the strikes, bodies hitting walls. Uh, that's what you're seeing right there. So it's a nice little fight scene that's fleshed out with some bass. But when we fast forward to the, one of the better bass moments in this film, and you can see it right here. This, my friends, this is all super intense bass that's associated with gunfire. Let's uh, let this play out, and then we'll give it a look on the FFT analyzer. <laughs> That is a whole lot of bass in here. This will flesh it out just a little bit for you on the FFT analyzer. You can see we're getting peak output right here, about 108 dB. We're right around 25, 26, 27 Hertz, right in that range. Some nice texture and variation, some little drop-offs to keep things fresh to your ears. But uh, that is crazy, crazy powerful bass. Now I have to tell you that is not the only moment in this film where gunfire is completely overwhelming. Check this out right here. This is a rewind to earlier in the movie. There's a, a gas station scene where this minigun gets taken out. And uh, yeah, I mean, just visually speaking, you can see that is a whole lot of craziness. Let's let that uh, play out just so you can enjoy it. Oh, 
This one's definitely a moment you'll want to pull up. It happens around 48 minutes into the film. Now back to our demo scene and one more moment that's worth highlighting uh, right here. You can see this elevator that Jason Statham has rigged to fall and these guys are all trying to get out of the way. We'll just let this one play out. <laughs> All right, so, I mean, we're talking about demo base right there. I mean, I'm not sure what else you could want from an action movie. Definitely dial that up on your system. You're gonna love it. Okay, let's move on to our reference scene. And just as a reminder, this is scene BH9. It's about one hour, 31 minutes, 44 seconds into the film. Runs roughly about four minutes long. And just to remember, Demo bass is bass that will really rock your system. It can be loud and obnoxious and over the top. Just push your system to the limit. Reference bass, it also can do that, but it also can kind of be the bass that's a little laid back, right? A little bit more detailed, something that just gives a scene a lot of emotion and impact. And that's exactly what we're going to see here. This uh, to me is the best bass moment of the movie, even though it might not be the most eye-popping bass uh, that we see. So as we begin to roll through this scene, you can see there's a lot of bass peppered here. Uh, this again, right here, this is about 50 hertz. Uh, this is about 30 hertz. So we get these bass pulses that are embedded into the score. You can see their intensity is definitely increasing. Uh, here's more of them. So uh, as you roll through the scene, you'll be able to see those. We have Jason Statham going up steps. We get a lot of bass associated with his attack as he's firing guns and throwing bodies around and things along those lines. Uh, there's some more bass pulses, but let's get ahead uh, to the moment of this film that is absolutely stellar. One of the things that I just love about this scene is that the movie's score is completely stripped away and what we're left with is just hand-to-hand -hand combat. We have lots of punches, bodies being thrown around, weapons being scraped along walls and things like that. The sound design for this scene is spectacular. The sound pans are amazing and we get this little bits of bass, these little transient hits of bass that are associated with the action that's going on that just round it all out and it is absolutely spectacular. Let's give it a watch. Pause up right there and just move it forward just a little bit. We have these sharp transient hits of bass that are associated obviously with the action right here. We're getting up into a 60 hertz range. There's stuff going on down here in the 30s. And here's a look at the FFT analyzer. And you can see right here, we're not talking about crazy high decibels, but because everything else is stripped away, this is actually really impactful. So uh, this guy right here, this is around 26 hertz. Uh, it's about 84 dB, so not crazy loud, but boy, does it really sound great. Uh, the rise and fall of these moments, we're talking quick hitting transients, and boy, do they sound good. Awesome stuff. Reference in every sense of the word. Absolutely love it. And you can see this movie throws a little bit of everything at you when it comes to bass. You get that hard, nasty, gnarly, impactful bass, and then you have moments like that where the bass is these quick hitting transients that just round out a scene and bring it to life. Just absolutely love it. I highly recommend checking out that scene either on disc or Kaleidoscape. You will be very, very happy. Okay, so what kind of equipment do you need to enjoy this movie? Well, I'd say you're really best off with a system that has a lot of headroom and is confident playing right down to 20 hertz. You don't need a subwoofer that's going down below uh, 20 hertz for this particular film. As you saw, there's not a lot of information down there. Most everything exists in that 23 hertz and up range. Much of the most impactful bass is really reserved, as you saw, maybe in the mid 40s down into the lower 30s, upper 20s. Uh, but 
Look, if you're rocking a smaller sub that's maybe underpowered for your room, or if you have a sound bar with a small wireless sub, you are definitely going to miss out on some things. I'm sure those subs will have limiters in them that will kind of tamp down on what's going on with what this film is asking it to play back. But you're definitely going to miss out on some of those really great, impactful moments that are happening down in the lower 30s and into the 20 hertz range. All right, folks, that's all I have for you on this episode of Base Hunters. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. If you want to track me down, you can find me over on X or Twitter. My handle there is at AV Woofer. And of course, you can always find me over on the home theater form at avnirvana.com. Please come over there and hang out with us. My username there is my name. That is Todd Anderson. We'll see you soon.